my name's Catherine. I live in Mackay on the east coast of Queensland, Australia. And I'd like to talk to you about Shrewsbury Rock or Shrewsbury Reef. It depends on which tide it is, whether it's a rock or a reef. <laughs> Shrewsbury Rock can be found uh, between Hotspur and Pine Peak Islands. They're part of a, the Percy group of islands, which is part of the larger group of Nusumbalan Islands. And they were um, discovered by Captain Cook uh, during his historic voyage along the eastern seaboard in 1770 and named after the first Duke of Northumberland, Q. Percy. Both Cook and Matthew Flinders make note of the island group in their journals, Cook describing them as such. I don't know if this is how he sounds, but I'm giving it a go. As soon as we got round the Cape, Cape Towns, and we hauled our wind to the westward in order to get within the islands which lay scattered up and down in this bay, Shoalwater Bay, around about 250 kilometres south of where we are, in great number, and extend out to sea as far as we could see from the masthead. How much farther will hardly be in my power to determine. They are as various in their height and circuit as they are numerous. Now, the island group, the Northumberland Island group, um, is quite remote and apart from charter flights to Marble Island, they are accessible only by um, private boats. There are no cruises that go out there. Uh, though if you want to send me out there, um, I can pop on out there in a helicopter. It's about 119 kilometres. It will cost you a small fortune. Happy to go. Anyway. <laughs> um, so in Mackay here, I know that a lot of you would be more familiar with, with Sunday Group. They are slightly north of us, directly out from us are the Cumberland Group, and then there's the Northumberland Group, all a part of the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park, which we are very, very fortunate to live in such close uh, proximity to. I'll share with you an excerpt from Charles Darwin, The Origin of the Species. Now, you might think that I'm going to read something about the platypus which uh, Charles Darwin likened to the water rat after he saw them frolicking in the, in the brook, the creek, um, but they're nothing like that. And I'm not going to read that. Instead, I'm going to talk to you about cuckoos. Turning now to the Australian species, though these birds generally lay only one egg in a nest, it is not rare to find two or even three eggs in the same nest. In the bronze cuckoo, the eggs vary greatly in size, from eight to 10 times in length. Now, if it had been of an advantage to this species to have laid eggs even smaller than those now laid, so as to have deceived certain foster parents, or as is more probable, to have been hatched within a shorter period, for it is asserted that there is a relation between the size of the eggs and the period of their incubation then there is no difficulty in believing that a race or species might have been formed which would have laid smaller and smaller eggs, for these would have been more safely hatched and reared. Mr Ramsey remarks that two of the Australian cuckoos, when they lay their eggs in an open nest, manifest a decided preference for nests containing eggs similar in colour to their own. The European species apparently manifests some tendency towards a similar instinct, but not really departs from it, as is shown by her laying her dull and pale coloured eggs in the nests of the hedge warbler with bright greenish blue eggs. Had our cuckoo invariably displayed the above instinct, it would assuredly have been added to those which it is assumed must all have been acquired together. The eggs of the Australian bronze cuckoo vary, according to Mr Ramsey, to an extraordinary degree in colour, so that in this respect, as well as in size, natural selection might have secured and fixed any advantageous variation. We'd love to see you in Mackay. <laughs>